Hello again. Um, we are going to, with this project, um, shape abstraction, um, start with a original image of something. Um, so that can be whatever you want. I've got a feather, an image of a feather here. Um, like I said, it could be whatever you want. Try to make sure that it's not something that's already so altered or simplified or abstracted that there's nowhere to go with it. And we can think of abstraction in a couple of different ways. We can think of it as um, simplifying the form to its essence, taking a particular characteristic of it and kind of moving, you know, changing the visual image, altering it until you get rid of all the extraneous details, until you've got this refinement of its basic form. Or we can also think about it as um, choose, you know, more openly as kind of an exaggeration on altering of types of the form, um, exaggerating or taking certain um, liberties with the visual image so that it expresses something different. All right, so once you have your image, you want to, the first one, I'm going to try to do five of these. We'll see how far we get. Um, for this video, maybe I'll get two done, but in class, we might get some more done. Let me start with some tracing paper. I've already got some different stuff on this tracing paper, um, so I might need to manipulate, make the best use of it um, in some particular way. That seems good. And I'm going to use a pencil, okay? And there is a pencil sharpener in the room, but I also have one of these little sharpener guys here. Just sharpen that pencil a little bit. Knock that stuff off. It's a mess. Um, and I kind of, you could tape this down. In fact, I will tape mine down. Um, I tend to make a mess of things um, so it doesn't move around on you too much. You don't have to. If you're careful enough, you can hold it in place. Um, but I'm going to tape it down because I'm not careful. I'd rather care less. Um, be careful not too carried away so that you tear up the paper. Um, anyway, okay, so now we have it so it won't move around on us. Um, so we start, and we're just going to trace the original image. As best we can, with as many of the details as we can. So you're going to start out, um, and what we're going to do with this tracing is transfer it onto a um, piece of black construction paper. I'm just kind of tracing the form. So I'm trying to get as realistic or as much of a real image for this first one. And then I will, from that one, proceed to alter it. All right, fast forward to have it pretty much traced out on my tracing paper. And there's a couple of ways I could transfer this onto the black construction paper. One, I could just lay it directly over the top and press really hard. Um, two, I could, and well, that'll make an impression. If I press really hard, so there'll be a little bit of an impression in that. Um, two, I could take pencil and go over the back side like this. Sometimes you can even just flip it over and do and press hard and that pencil on the other, the original pencil will be pressed to but we'll kind of do a little bit of this just because it's more complicated makes a more boring video I mean uh, yeah, whatever we'll edit so we'll cover this I'm kind of making this in my own carbon paper all right so now we have graphite all over the other side of the paper and again you could have pressed hard or you could have it, flipped it and have it reversed, which you know, might not matter for you do it. Um, so when you put this down on your paper, don't put it dead center of the piece of paper. And this is a good rule for any type of like flat sheet material, uh, be it construction paper, be it plywood, be it sheets of 18 gauge steel or whatever. Um, you're going to kill, I mean, you're going to use up a big area of this middle part um, and it's going to limit what you can do with the rest of the paper. Instead, try to get it on the edge as much as possible, um, or to an edge, so that you could maximize the most out of the piece of construction, the piece of paper, or whatever that material is that you're cutting into. Um, otherwise, you'll waste a bunch. Now, again, I could tape, um, because I'm careless, because if it moves around on you when you're working, um, Hard, but before I tape the whole thing, um, if I 
use my pencil again, and I press down on here and over that line, the graphite that's on the other side should, it's kind of hard to see in probably in the video, but it's transferring a light line onto this construction paper. Right. I will tape down and continue the process. It's exciting. Makes good action video. You don't necessarily have to use a pencil. You could use any kind of device that would press hard against um, and leap, so it would cause that uh, graphite to transfer onto the construction paper. Anyway. So now we've got done pressing that image in there. And it's probably hard you know, to see, but there's a light image of a feather on there. Anyway, so when you cut... Get that out of the way. When you cut um, with a knife, um, check to see that the blade is sharp and you can, want, don't use your finger. Um, one of the ways you can, you'll notice that is if you start cutting with it and it's tearing the paper rather than cutting it. Um, but also before that, I see that, you should put a cutting board underneath. We have cutting boards at school so you don't cut up the tables. Um, if you're at home working on this, um, sometimes a piece of cardboard can work or just a piece of scrap material that you have, like a board, a piece of board or something like that you might have, or something you just don't mind that you're going to cut up. Um, but if you're working on a nice table, you don't want to mess up, um, don't cut directly on it because you will cut into it. So these blades, the way they work, you can unscrew this and then push this down and it releases this pressure on this collet that tightens up when you push when it gets um, tightened down. Uh, well, it tightens up and it tightens down, but it pulls it in and crimps it against the blade. Um, so these blades should go in a proper um, sharps container. We have one in the, in the classroom that you can put that into. If you're at home, um, if you have a, some of you might have a razor blade thing, if you use um, straight razor, uh, not uh, regular razor blades, and you have, they come with a container that you can slide them back into. Um, but don't just throw it into regular trash. Sometimes it'll end up injuring somebody because it's very sharp. Um, so I'll put a new blade in because that one, you can see the tip of it is a little worn down because I use them for all kinds of stuff. Be very careful when handling razor blades. You can get cut very easily. Be very, there's one or two here. Nope, that's just one. I got one left. Oh boy. Um, be very careful because it's very easy to cut yourself. Um, slides in there. Whoops. Slide it back in, Joe. And then you turn this, the whole thing, and it will start to tighten down and crimp against it. Okay? Don't grab it from here and twist it because you'll cut yourself. Um, be very careful. Don't cut towards your face. Never, never cut towards yourself or have a piece of paper and cut, you know, holding the paper, oops, or anything for that matter, and cut against it or your lap. Um, use the cutting board or a surface that you can damage um, that won't be hurt. Um, so, wow, it's going to be hard to see these lines. Um, I'll start here. So I'm going to start at a point where I can start. Um, and again, I don't want to have my hand here. I would cut into it. It gets the, the paper all bloody and it makes a mess. So moving along with some pressure. Sorry, my head was probably in the way. With some pressure to it. As you cut along. Now you can follow the whole thing and cut it out so you have a you know an exact negative of your of the positive. If you wanted to do that, that could be fun to have and you do something with that. Um, or if it's easier, especially because I'm right on the edge here, sometimes it becomes better if your form is really complicated, um, to cut pieces away so that they're not getting, you know, end up with this big thing and it's kind of getting stuck in there. It can be nice, you can do that, um, but it can make it easier to cut away parts as you go along um, so you don't get too, don't get torn up in parts. Anyway, so we'll keep, I'll keep going and get to the next step. One, one bit of advice as you're cutting, um, you can see how I have these, I'm going to put a white paper underneath it, just so you can see it. And these points, if I'm cutting, I'm not actually cutting right now, but if I'm cutting and I cut this way, and I cut this way, I'm going in the direction of that point. Um, 
and I don't pull on it. If I cut, if I have this already and I cut this way, I'm going to pull and I can kind of damage, that point can kind of crinkle up. Um, so it's good to kind of work towards the thinner area, the point. Okay, so you cut here and then cut there towards that point so it doesn't fold back up. And again, if your blade is cutting, tearing, shredding the paper as opposed to cutting it, um, you want to uh, get a new blade, right?